Hi guys, and welcome to part 10 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now, I've got quite a few mods to show you this time, so I will try and keep it to the point. And I'm going to start off with a mod that many of you will already be aware of, and probably using. Um, and it's the A Quality World Map with Roads. Now, this mod, it's quite simple really, uh, and yet, for some reason, it just makes such a difference. Um, the standard map in Skyrim is, is very good, um, it's, it's sort of a very nice idea, but it's also kind of strange. I mean, I can see the cloud cover over Riften, for example, uh, like it's a satellite photograph, but I can't quite make out the roads. You can sort of, if you look very carefully, uh, but it, it's not particularly detailed. And I don't know about you, but every time I've ever looked at a map, the most prominent detail are the roads. So it's a little unusual not to have them. Now you could say you haven't discovered them yet, so they're not on your map, but I think Skyrim's pretty well mapped out anyway. Plus, even once you've discovered them, they don't appear on the map. So this map, basically, it's, it's a higher quality version and it has roads. And I just, I mean, I absolutely love it. It actually changes the way I play a little bit. I, I thought at first that it would stop me from exploring because I'd just be able to, you know, I knew the roads and so therefore I, would, I wouldn't explore. But the opposite is actually true. Before I was using this map, what I used to do was uh, put a quest marker, put the player set quest marker, and then just head straight to it. I'd go over rivers, I'd go over mountains if possible, just in a straight line through everything. And sometimes I'd discover things, but actually I, I generally went very fast to places. Since using this map, I sort of meander, I follow the roads more often, and I, I keep discovering little towns uh, and odd little things. And I do feel more like a traveller travelling the roads. So it actually helps me explore. But however you look at it, it generally makes life a lot more uh, predictable when travelling. You, you don't have to keep just wandering around, bumping into invisible walls. You can plan your route, and it just feels great. So this is one I highly recommend. Installing it is very easy, so I'm not going to cover that. It really is. It's one of those dead easy mods. Now, the next mod I'm going to cover is the categorized favorites menu. Now, this, this mod is one of those that you, you sort of try thinking it might be fairly useful, and then you instantly know you love it. You just instantly know you can't play without it ever again. Um, I've been playing a mage playthrough recently and I don't have enough hotkeys and I'm constantly going back to the favourites menu and let's face it, the vanilla favourites menu is tiny. It Everything's in a long list where you can see just a few things and you have to pick them. It's really, really annoying. It's just, it, I don't know, it, it, at some level it's a terrible design. Um, and what this mod does is it adds a large favourites menu that is categorised. And as you can see, you can instantly see all your favourite potions, all your favourite spells, weapons, armour, whatever. It categorises them all. Uh, sometimes it misses a few things that should be on armour and it puts them in other. But generally, it's just so useful. You can very, very quickly pick the spell you want, switch to it, pick the potion you want. It's just, it's brilliant. Installing it is, again, very, very easy. If you're using the mod manager, it's just click the download with manager button. Dead easy, so I'm not even going to cover that one. And the next mod I'm going to cover is another mod that's great if you're doing a mage playthrough and you've got loads of spells, and it's the Extra Hotkeys version 2 mod. Now, there's not really a lot to show you with this mod. Basically, it gives you 20 new hotkeys. The default ones are the F1 to 10 key and all the symbol keys. Um, you can customize them and I am going to show you how to do that. Um, you also need Script Dragon. Now Script Dragon uh, may be new to some of you but it's basically very similar to the SKSE mod in that it is a mod that lets mod authors do more things. Uh, in this case, it allows them to run a lot of things that they would not be able to run without the creation kit. And perhaps even some that they wouldn't be able to run even if they did have the creation kit. Um, so that is, that is something I'm going to show you how to install. It's very useful and there are loads of mods coming out now that do in fact use it. So the this mod, the Extra Hotkeys version 2 mod though, 
it is well worth trying if you have a lot of spells and you don't want to use the favorites menu all the time. And one last mod I'm going to cover before showing you how to install things is a little mod called Skyrim Boost. Now, if you remember last week, I showed you a mod called the Acceleration Layer, which was actually a small plugin for SKSE and gave you a great boost to performance in CPU intensive areas. Uh, for example, the top step in Whiterun. Now, there is another version of this mod. Well, it's not another version of the mod. It's a completely separate mod, but it uses the same code, the same principle. And some people were actually claiming that this one gave a better performance boost than the acceleration layer. So I tested it out and it did in fact give a better performance boost for me. Now I can't promise it's going to do the same for you, but on the test I did for this, I got 33 frames a second on vanilla, 44 frames a second using the acceleration layer, and 52 frames a second using sky boost. So that's actually a noticeable difference. Now, when downloading the script dragon, you need to try and find the correct version, the latest version for you. There seem to be two versions, the normal one and the Russian version. Um, and for example, I am playing the 1.3.10.0 patch, so I need that version. Um, every time the game gets updated, gets patched, this script dragon will stop working I'm afraid it's kind of like SKSE in that and you'll have to wait for the uh, mod author to actually fix it now it gets updated relatively quickly a week or so not as fast as SKSE I have found but quickly enough um, it's probably worth taking a backup of your executable if you don't want all the mods that use this to stop working when it patches now once the file has downloaded open it up it's a zip file and also open up your game folder again this is not your data folder the game folder is the folder where you find the file tesv.exe that is your game folder and you need to go into the downloaded zip and go to the bin folder and you need two files from here you need both of the files that end in dll that's the dinput8.dll and the script dragon dll you need those copy those into your game folder and that is actually script dragon installed now again i as you can see here what i've done is i've copied my executable file and renamed it to 1.3.10.0 so if the game gets patched and it stops working I can revert to this I can disable the automatic updating you might want to also update um, change the steam to not automatically update this game now there are a couple of test um, mods I guess you would call them uh, for example horse spawner um, and that will spawn a horse at the press of a button and you can you can test the mod out with these if you want they're, they're generally little cheats basically spawn a free horse etc uh, but you can use them to test the mod now to install script dragon mods what you actually do is you copy the .asi file and the .ini file into one of a few places now you can actually copy them into the game folder and they will run just fine there I generally don't like doing that I, I'm not a big fan of putting files in this folder but that will work. Generally speaking, I prefer to put them in a folder called ASI. So I make ASI and then I copy any of the scripts into here. That's where I would run them. So if I was going to use the horse spawner, I would copy these into the ASI folder. Under That's my game folder, Skyrim, ASI. And the horse spawner mod is now installed. It's really as simple as that. Now, personally, I would really like this mod to actually allow you to put them in the data folder. Um, not only do I think that would be neater, I actually think it would make installing it easier, especially using things like the Nexus Mod Manager. Um, the Nexus Mod Manager only installs files to data, so if you're using an ASI file, unfortunately, there, you always have to insist on some manual installation. So that's a bit of a downside. But that is it, that's Script Dragon now installed. When I run the game, 
Script Dragon will run automatically. And you'll know if it's um, if you've installed something like the Horse Trainer, um, or in fact a lot of Script Dragon mods, what they actually do is they announce to you that they are running when you first load a game, which is nice, it lets you know. So now of course we need a mod that uses Script Dragon, and, uh, and I've picked Extra Hotkeys. Um, it's Extra Hotkeys version 2, and there is a download with manager button. Uh, don't click it, that really should be disabled. Uh, because basically, as I said, this it will install it into the wrong place. So, download it manually. So once you've downloaded it, open the, uh, the, the zip file. Now you'll find three files inside. There is an extra hotkeys readme.txt. I really do suggest you read that. It gives you installation instructions plus how to use the mod. Um, and you really do need to follow his instructions. This mod, I, I've just told you basically, I prefer to put the ASI and the INI file in the ASI folder. This mod will not let you do it. You need to copy these directly into the folder, into the game folder. You must do that. It will not work if you do not. But that's it. That's how you install it. It's very, very simple to install. It may take you a little longer to set it up if you don't like to use the default keys. Now, to customize the mod, basically you change the extra hotkeys any. And if you look at the top here, there are 20 keys. 20 keys. Key 1, key 2, all the way to key 20. These are the 20 hotkeys you have. The default is, as you can see, say, for this one is F1, which corresponds to the ASCII code 0x70. Now, if you change this to a different ASCII code, it will then have key 1 being a different key. So, for example, let's say I want to make the default, I want to make key 1 A. I find A and it's 0x41. So I go up here, and I change this to 0x41. Key 1 now is A. You don't actually have to change this if you don't want, but it might be useful to actually, when you look at it, you can remember what the key is. And that's it. You do that for all of these, and set it up the way you want. Now, there is also the assign key. This is something else you might want to change. It defaults to K. This is the key that you press that tells the mod to start remembering your hotkeys. So when you press K and then say press the F2 key, it assigns whatever you've got in your hands, whatever spell you've got in your hands or weapon to the F2 key. You then press K again and it stops remembering. But if you don't want to use the K key, you can change that. And it's the exact same way. Just find the key you want to use, find the number, and put that number in instead. It's a little bit more complicated than, than most mods, I guess. But you will get used to it. And I can tell you that more or less all the Script Dragon mods use the same method for using hotkeys. And, and at the moment, most of the mods that uh, you, uh, detect key presses are using Script Dragon. In fact, I think all of them. So here we are in game, and as you can see, it tells me the extra hotkeys is active. Uh, and I'll show you how to use it. I'll get off my horse. It's a little easier to show you that way. Right. So, Okay, I've got some vampire followers. Let me get rid of them. They're going to be very, very annoying. This is one uh, other thing. I can't figure out how to dispel my thanes. My thralls, sorry. I have to summon familiars and then expel them. If anyone knows how to expel thralls, do tell me. Alright, that should be a bit quieter. So, I'll start with spells. I'm going to press the activation key, which is K by default, and I get this little message telling me that hotkey assignment is now on. I pick a spell. Um, let's pick Firebolt. Firebolt is a good old, good old faithful spell. And I then press the hotkey 1, which is F1 by default, and I get a little message telling me it has been assigned. I can then press the assignment key, the activation key again, and it tells me hotkey assignment is off. And it is that simple. Now F1 is fireball. So if I, I switch to my weapon and another spell and then press F1 twice, I get fireball. Now one other thing, one great thing about this mod is you can assign it uh, weapons to the left hand. 
So, for example, if I pick a staff and left hand I put my ebony dagger, and then I turn the hotkey assignment on with the K and then press F2, I've now assigned the dagger in the off hand so that I'll go to spells. Now, watch. There you go. Now, it's one of the things that the game just doesn't seem to do for me. At least, you know, a lot of people have reported this. Whenever they try and assign a key to the left hand, it, it just doesn't seem to work. I know some people get it working, but I don't, I don't seem to get it working. Whereas, with this mod, there you go. I can now have dual wield setups from hotkeys rather than favourites, which is very useful. You can also hotkey shouts. Um, you have to do it a little bit differently. Um, the way to do that is to disarm, get empty hands of any items or spells, so they're completely gone. Pick the shout, and then go through the process again. Click the activation key so you get the message, then click the hotkey you want. I'm going to pick F3, and then press the activation key again. And now I've got a, a shout so if I switch the shouts to say Whirlwind Sprint and then press the F3 key, press F3 now, as you can hear a little click, if I go back to my favourites, Unrelenting Force has now been equipped, which is, that's nice, because you get a lot of shouts. And you can also do armour. Now armour's a little bit more difficult. What you actually have to do is drop the item, then you need oh, chase it down the hill. You then need to pick the item up. Well, no, you need to grab the item. Don't pick it up into your inventory, but grab it so that you lift it up, as you can see. Then press the activation key. Then pick your hotkey, as you can see. You then have to pick the item up again. But then once you've done that, it's now hotkeyed. So if I press the hotkey, there you go. There's my helmet, which takes my robe off because my robe's got a hood. Not a good look for me, I don't think. <laughs> the uh, Not the scariest vampire lord ever seen, really. Put the Archmage's robes back on, I think. But that's it, really. I mean, it's uh, a little bit more work than the normal hotkeys, but you've now got 30 of the things. Well, no, 28, technically, because you start off with 8, and you get 20 more with this mod. So, a lot more options. And that leaves us with Skyrim Boost. So you'll download that from, um, it's the same site as Script Dragon actually. It's by the same author. And currently it's up to release three. So download that zip file. And once it's finished downloading, open up the zip file. And again, go to the bin folder. Now there are two files, the dinput8.dll and the skyboost ASI. Now, a lot of people get kind of worried because when they copy this across, it's going to delete the one from Script Dragon. Well, don't worry. I mean, do not worry at all. You can pretty much ignore this file. If you've got Script Dragon installed, you don't even need to copy it. The files are identical. They are the same file. So you can actually ignore it. If you've not installed Script Dragon, then yes, you have to copy this to the game folder. But if you've installed Script Dragon, you can ignore it. So all you're going to need is the skyboost.asi. Now you can copy this to the game folder, but as I have already said, I prefer to put it in the ASI folder, which as you can see is where I've put it. And it works just fine there. And it really is that simple. You now have Skyboost installed and you will notice a great improvement to your performance. And you may also notice that this video is covering mods that really are beginning to change the way you play the game, not just how the game looks. More and more mods of this type are coming out, so it's a pretty exciting time to be part of the Skyrim modding community. But that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember, click the like button. I always appreciate that. The next video will be out in about one week's time. I hope you join me for that. And until then, have fun.